In this topic, you will learn how to return goods to a supplier. Now, when returning products to a supplier, you manage this through the purchasing module. And there's a process flow. There are several determinations that you need to make, including where the return site is, the date you're going to return, the supplier, the return type, whether it's intercompany or company to company, inter-site within the same company, a normal purchase return, or a direct return or dropship return. You also give a return reason, the products you're returning, and if it's associated with an order, if you're going to update that order, the quantity, and the unit of measure. You also can determine the status of the product or products on the return, if it's accepted or if it needs to go through quality control or destroyed. You can also decide if you're going to modify the original order and if the product can be returned to stock. And finally, you can have the system automatically generate a credit memo if needed. Now let's take a look at the process to return product to a supplier. You receive graphic adapters and error from a supplier and you return them and you want to record this transaction in the system. The supplier has agreed to give you credit for the mistake. Now to do this transaction, you go to the purchasing module and then you go to the returns block and the return management function. Now here you have several entry transactions or data entry screens to use. Now you may have customized different screens to meet your needs, but of course you can also have a default screen that you have selected to use. Let's use the entry transaction that allows the most flexibility, and that's the one that says all. Now according to issues flow management rules coming from the product category, Return products can only have a status of R or rejected. Now you've already entered a stop change transaction to change the product that you want to return to rejected. Now to complete a return process, we click New, enter the site of the return, and that's the site that you're returning the product from, and the return date that you're returning, the return number is automatically generated on creation. Now, the enter site and enter company checkboxes are automatically selected based on a supplier selected at the supplier field. That's if it's enter site or site to site or enter company, company to company. You select the buyer and then the supplier. Now, if this was a warehouse managed site, the warehouse field would also be available. At the address field, that is the address that the goods are being returned to, and it could be multiple different addresses for suppliers. The next thing you enter is the authorization number. Now, the authorization number is provided by the supplier. Now, by default, it's mandatory, but you can change the parameter to have it be optional. Let's go ahead and enter the number. Now, you can enter supplier returns linked to one or more receipts or enter a direct return without reference to a previous receipt. However, this is related to a receipt. So we go to the left list and select the receipt selection. And then we're able to select the receipt. And as you can see, once the receipt is selected, the line is populated. Now you notice it's in red. Until the line is completely entered, it will be remain red, will turn black once it's completely entered. As we tab through, we enter all of the options that are available as we discussed earlier. One, the return reason. And we're selecting not ordered. As you can see, the table is a miscellaneous table number seven, allowing you the options of entering multiple different types of reasons unit of measure, the quantity is going to be returned from the receipt is 15. And then the status of the return. The location. And this is the location that you want it to be returned to or return from. 
The identifier field is a user-defined field where you can enter additional descriptions if you like. A movement description as well. And do you want the order, original order, reinstated? You have multiple different options that you want if you want the information on the same line, another line, or produce another order. And of course, this is the product being returned completely. The next thing is whether you're going to generate a credit. And to do that, you select yes. In this case, it is yes. If it's associated with a project, you can select the project number. You can select a different account number that it's supposed to. This could be a for purchase, fixed assets, or for services, and of course, it's for purchases. Transaction group allows you to enter a transaction group and be able to report or do inquiries associated with it. The weight that you can change, destination, etc. Next, you create. Now, the next thing you can do, you can actually print um, a documentation for it as well, or print a report for it, and be able to attach it to um, reports. As you can see, the status is below that it's going to be either be posted, printed, or validation. And it means you print the document. But the first thing that we will do at this case, we'll validate it. Validating what it does is allows it to generate an accounting transaction. Also, it allows you to generate the credit as well. So we'll go ahead and do validation. And here's the document that's generated um, on validation. So on validation, the product has been removed from inventory. It's been validated, so the credit has also been generated. And a financial transaction has also been generated for the general ledger. You can see the document number that's been generated. Our next step is to select our credit. And to select our credit, you stay in the purchasing module. And this is done by selecting invoice control. And we'll select a full entry transaction here. Now to generate the credit, we click select a new record. Then we enter the site again. And then the invoice type, and because it's a credit, and a specific one has been created for credit and return, as you can see, it's CRR that's been created for you. And then the supplier. Next, because it is a credit that was generated, we should be able to select the return selection and then select the document to populate the line for our return. The next thing we need to do is on the management tab, we enter the supplier document number of the credit that they assigned to us. Next, we need to verify the amount and then enter it on our first management tab, our total. And as you can see, once that's been entered and once it's correct, it says the invoice is ready to validate. And now at this point, we create. As you can see, the document number has been generated and we can post this transaction. And now the financial transaction has also been generated and it has been applied to the supplier, giving us the credit balancing the count out with the original purchase and invoice and also the credit that's associated with the return of the product. And now you know how to process a return where you're returning a product to a supplier.